Hiya, Laurie here. Welcome back. So, welcome to part four of our ring bound junk journal creating a craft with me kind of mini series. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. So, I have now finished decorating all the pages. So, I'm going to do a quick, not so much a flip through, but just to kind of show you what the pages look like, and then we can start the terrifying part of punching our holes and my good friend Lori was very kind and sent me some rings to try this um, so I've got a fair amount there I'm thinking two will be enough but if not I'll try it with three but I'm really hoping that two will be enough um, I was actually thinking of adding some Inca gold to the cover um, just kind of around the edge here so I'm just going to take like a little earbud cleany thing and I'm just going to rub it against the edge um, obviously you can take your finger and do that um, it's just easier to control a small object rather than your whole finger in my opinion obviously do you whatever you prefer um, I got this on Amazon. Um, if you just type in Inca Gold, it should come straight up. You can also get them in little tubes as well. Um, I've got one that's in the shape of a little tube and it's like a bronzy colour. You can get them in silver, gold, there's many, many colours you can get them in. And I just think that they add a really nice gilding, essentially, to whatever you put them on. I like to add them to page edges and wax seals, the usual. So I hope you're all doing well and you're having a nice summer thus far. Um, are you going away? Have you been away? Let me know. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of putting it on the bare edge. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my throat, I swear. When I'm talking, I'm, I'm completely fine. And then the second I start filming, a frog jumps in there and has its wicked way with me. It will not let me speak. Um, I can't even remember what I was going to say now. Dang, damn it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'm just putting it on the edge, basically. So, the very, very edge, all the way around. You don't have to do anything to kind of set that, it just dries on its own. Um, but yeah, this is the front cover. And I left the Enchanted Forest part of the inside cover. So you could still read that, even though I've added some embellishments to the top. Obviously I haven't done anything different from when I showed you it last. Um, obviously we decorated some pages together. Um, in the past two videos but there are obviously some pages I think I've got 51 or 52 pages here in all so obviously I've decorated some without you but I'm just gonna kind of speed through this part and show you the pages so I hope you like them
is our chunky monkey. And now it's time to bind it. <laughs> um, so, obviously, like I said in the last video, Laurie's video is no longer available to watch. But one thing she did say was that the space for the holes, so from here to here, shouldn't be much bigger than half a centimetre. Um, <clears throat> so, that's what we're going with. So obviously I need to measure and see how tall our actual cover is. So it's 24 and a half centimetres, which is nine and three quarter inches. So I'm going to be doing this in centimetres because that's just what I work with. So what did I say that was? 24 and a half? 24 and a half. I'll write that down on something. Okay. So now I just need to do some maths. Yay! I hate maths. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of card and I'm actually going to cut it to the same size as our cover. Which is how far it goes. Okay, and that will be our template. So I'm just gonna go grab a piece of card. Because I want a pretty sturdy um, template. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to glue these to the spine area and that will give us a really nice sturdy um, area for plunging our holes into. Okay. Oops. No. I'm just gonna bump in it so that I make sure that it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to measure out six from the top and six from the bottom. So now I'm going to measure half a centimeter and then that cross is where our hole is going to go and that cross there and I'm just going to put the top there so that I know that, that is the top and that is the bottom and now I can punch my holes. Obviously, if you're confident to go ahead and do this um, without um, using a template, go ahead. I'm not that confident. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to lock this in place. If I don't break it first, my goodness. Okay, it's broken. It's not working, so I give in before I lose my damn mind. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to grab um, my little one here. I'm just emptying that out. Um, and actually, no, I'm not because I can't see through that one. Just 
I'm just leaning that across up. Hey, chicken. And the same here. So I don't know where that cut out. My phone is really, really annoying me lately. Um, so I went and grabbed my other crop without because it's, I think, a bit stronger when it comes to pushing the holes. It's a bit dusty because I haven't used it in a while. Purely because I don't like this part of it. It doesn't work properly for me. Um, so trying again to Poke the holes, hopefully without the entire book falling on me. Um, there we go. No, how has that happened? <sighs> Yeah, I think I'm going to have to just go in page by page, so... <sighs> so that this doesn't happen. I'm going to have to put like something over that. Don't know what. This might just end up coming out altogether. <sighs> yeah, so... I'm going to go away and poke all these holes individually, page by page. So I'm not going to make you watch me do that because... That's just mean. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I'll be right back. Okay, so that's me finally done all the hole punching. Um, I went back in and I had to add some, this one I just added like a hole reinforcer thing to either side and then I cut off the excess. But there was a couple that I added just another piece for instance here um, I've just put another piece of the same paper kind of like a little band around it and then repunched the hole so that's that done <laughs> I also went ahead and added the lace that I wanted to add here and I've just got a bit of um, parchment paper kind of tucked under there just to let it dry so that it doesn't glue itself shut. Um, where's my little scissors? So yeah, I'm just letting that dry with the um, baking paper. So it's mostly dry, it's just got a little tackiness to it still, but I'm going to start putting the rings on. And hopefully we only need two. So these rings are, let me see, about two inches, I'd say. Yeah, two inches slightly wide. So I don't know, obviously, if you could use a different size. You could probably get away with maybe a one and a half inch. But again, like I said, I, I don't know. I've never done this before, so I am purely taking a guess at that. Um, these are the ones that Laurie sent me for this very purpose. So, if you have any questions, maybe leave them down below and she could maybe answer questions if she is able to do that, actually. I don't know if she still has like, an account to do that or not, but... If you have any questions, I can certainly ask her and then answer the questions in the comment section below. So, again, I'm probably going to speed through this part because it looks quite tedious. Um, I'm just literally going to slide these pages 
through the hole until all of them are attached. Here is our journal. I think I may end up needing to remove a couple of pages because she chunky <laughs> and I haven't even added the embellishments and well I've added the embellishments but I haven't added anything to the pockets yet and obviously there's a fair amount of pockets <laughs> so I think I'm going to go through and decide which pages to take out. For instance, I think I'm going to take this page out because that's one of the ones that I messed up on and there's not like a lot of, um, it's not going to take too much away from the journal by removing that. So I'm going to take this, this little guy out. And again, just have a kind of flip through and see what else I can remove. But I love the fact that these are still functional, even though um, there's the fold. I wasn't sure how that was going to work um, with the ring bound. I may have to put something on that because I seem to have got that really close to the edge. Um, so I'm going to take this one out just now. Um, and pop it to the side. It may be one that I just end up leaving out, um, but obviously it's really close to the edge there. And whoever wins the giveaway, I will also include these pages, even though they're not in the journal, and that way if you want to pop them uh, back in or use them for whatever, you can certainly do so. So, out there. So I guess that page is coming out <laughs> as is this one before it tears but I want to put this one back in because it's one of the ones that I really like. <laughs> it's one of my favourite ones. Um, It's got obviously the big pocket here and it's got the embossed envelope so I will be putting that one back in. I think that's fine now. 
um, obviously again it will bulk up once we start adding things to the pockets and things um, so I just need a piece of paper actually I think I'm going to need to do it to both because that one's really close to the edge as well Give that a moment to grab and dry and then I'm going to cut the excess off. I spent ages trying to find the little circle stickers that I have of these and then I remembered that I actually had the the punch for it. Um, so yeah I'm going to give that a moment to dry and then I will pop that one back in. These I will just leave out and like I said whoever wins the giveaway these will be included um, as well so while that's drying I will just show you a few of the things that I kind of put together so this is um, a few things that I've made and kind of accumulated so I've got a couple of massive um, paper clips that I want to include and then I've got another um, cameo paper clip um, that I've created. And then this I was thinking we could use as a closure um, by like it clips on like so. Um, I apologise if you can hear my kids shouting from room to room because that's what they're doing right now. <laughs> um, they're shouting at each other rather than, you know, walking to the other room it's far easier to shout at each other <laughs> so this is just something i had in my stash that i bought a while ago as for to be a closure i don't think it's going to work dang that yeah. um, because obviously the papers are jutting out i don't think it's going to work but oh well um, so i've made up a couple of button cards with some vintage buttons um, so these are Mother of Pearl, I think they're called. Um, and then these are just white, clearish um, vintage buttons. And I've actually sewn them onto this card with um, vintage thread. So I've got a couple of th um, little spools of vintage thread. So I thought I would use that to sew them on. So it's thread and vintage buttons on those. And then I just I'd made a couple of little pockets, embellishment type thingamabobs. Um, so this is a library card and I've just kind of made a little decoration on the front and left the back for journaling. And then this one I've made a pocket out of a guest check and I've just stuck a pretty image on the front and I've made the pocket with this very pretty um, brown lace. And then I left one of the frames that we made in one of the previous videos and I've made it into a sort of cabinet card style so I've added um, a bit of card on the back that's got a really pretty um, design on it and obviously you can slip the photo inside as well obviously it doesn't need to stay in that pocket but I thought it was pretty and then I've got a little tag here and then a larger one here and um, this is like one of those large layaway tags and I've put one of those um, digital prints of doilies, a bit of that on it, with some vintage music paper and one of those little cute frames. And I actually forgot to trim off the bottom part there, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is what I've made so far. And then I obviously showed you some of the, the vintage items that I'm going to be including, but I've accumulated a few more. Um, so obviously we've got the vintage photo slide and I've added a piece of white paper to the back of that and it just helps the image upside down, come through a little bit. So here's the waterfall here um, and it's like a little pond or 
something that it's kind of crashing into and then there's trees on either side and then we have a vintage later and another vintage later um, obviously that's the little vintage um, Bible verse that's to go on the front. Um, some that's the vintage photographs that I showed you in one of the previous videos. Small fingers and thumbs. And I've got this vintage letter. Well, not letter envelope, but it is very very delicate. Um, there's nothing inside it at the moment. I don't know. I might put one of those envelopes inside it. A, one of those letters inside it but it's very delicate I might add a bit of vintage tape to the, the side there and then I thought this was quite fitting um, it's for the nature conservation <laughs> conservation of British wild, wildlife appeal oh my goodness it's for British wildlife anyway and I thought with our forest theme at went well and it's got a little badger down here um which is dead cute and we've got a vintage um postcard and it's got jean ear on it and i just thought it was really pretty and then another couple of vintage postcards this one's got a big massive tree you can really only see its trunk and then there's a little kid staring up at the trunk which i just thought was absolutely adorable um and then there's this one, which is a mountain and forest view. And then again, that um, Edith Holden diary page, the check and deposit slip. And then we have the, the sergeant, which is actually a postcard. I didn't realize that was a postcard. I thought it was a photo. Um, so these are all authentic vintage items, obviously. And will be put in the journal. So I'm going to cut that. There we go. Okay, so obviously um, I've got a lot of pockets to fill. I don't know what I'm going to put in every pocket, but I've got a few things sitting to the side um, for embellishments and things like that. So I've got obviously my little bag of lace trims that I've been kind of going through. I've got those two um, digital print letters, which we're going to kind of age up a wee bit before we put them in. Um, another two little tags. Um, I can pop that to the side so I don't get mixed up. I made another um, larger tag. Okay, well, I didn't make it, it was already made. Really, I just kind of inked it up and put a bit of sari trim at the top. You know, it didn't fit in my little bag. <laughs> um, I've also got a glassine bag here that I would like to use in some way. And then I've got three little um, tags here that are from a digi kit. I'm working on at the moment. Um, a little postcard ephemera piece. Um, so that's not like a real original postcard. This is from a old newspaper. Um, and it's like a little cottage with a tree and things like that outside. I thought it was appropriate. And then we've got little bits and bobs here as well. Some memo pads and writing paper and stuff like that. Uh, I've got some vintage wallpaper that I thought we could make like a phone pocket. This is just some vintage, uh, not vintage, sorry, 
tea dyed envelopes and it was just so that I had little bits of tea dyed paper at hand that I could use for collaging if necessary. These are all pieces of packaging but they all have a sort of botanical woodland sort of theme to them so I thought that I would keep them out and if we use them we use them if we don't we don't um, and then I've got this sort of envelope thing um, it's made of vellum or tracing paper and it's a pocket um, or an envelope and it's quite an unusual shape I really like it and um, again this is from a piece of packaging so um, maybe pop something in there <laughs> and then just paper clip it onto the side of the page Got more of those um, doily prints some more botanical type ephemera for decoration um, the rest of those wallpaper prints um, some book page well a vintage book page um, and then a cut off of one and then this is like vintage ephemera print out type thingamabobs um, I grabbed one of my books so that I can take paper from it if needed I also grabbed some more frames um, I don't know if I'm going to use them or not but I thought handy to have and then this is like a card like a birthday card or greetings card but I thought we could put maybe some paper into it and it could be like a mini notebook and then I've got some um, receipts and ledger paper type prints that I thought we could just trace and use as ephemera and the same with this this is a print out of a envelope and then this was a just piece of card or heavy duty paper rather and then these two also wanted to include in as ephemera this is from a vintage exercise book on um, typewriting so it's got some actual writing on it and then it's got like this is exercise 25 apparently um, and it's just kind of how you would learn to type using a typewriter and then this is from a vintage music book and I just loved the, the front cover of it I thought it was very fitting for our forest theme um, enchanted forest theme it's even got a castle up the top <laughs> um, so yeah I wanted to include those two as well so they'll probably just get folded down and added to a page or pocket rather um, so I'm just going to fold this envelope in half that's how it's supposed to be <laughs> um, and we can start with this since it's in my hand um, just find my bone folder so this is a digital print from um, Ruby and Pearl XO again and it, I think it comes with the, the vintage letter kit that I showed in the first video. Um, I'm pretty sure it, that it came with that. Um, I don't think it has a letter that matches it, but it just comes as is, and you obviously cut it out. <clears throat> um, and I'm just going to ink it up. Just, I'm not like trying to get every edge or every like the whole thing covered. And ink. I'm just kind of loosely adding it but I am going to go in and add it very lightly to the top here just so that that peeking out isn't stark white and I'm just doing it in very very light I'm barely touching the paper um, and I'm doing it in little circular motions and that way I'm not going to get any like stroke or lines if I was to obviously go like this and put more pressure on it I would get some lines which I don't want so 
Like I said, I'm barely touching the paper as obviously I see that the, the ink's getting less, I'm putting more pressure. I'm just going to do the sides. I'm not too bothered with how the sides look. I just want to take that stark white away. So obviously we'll be sticking those together. What I might do actually is make a little spine. Now that I'm thinking about it. So I'm just taking a little scrap here and I'm going to just measure it. And that's obviously the height of my envelope. hinges I guess <laughs> so again I'm just folding it in half and I'm just going to add ink to the spine or the folded area And then these will get glued on, like so. And that way that we can obviously glue our envelope shut and still have the full access to the envelope. But I'm going to just go ahead and distress that a little bit more before we do that. <clears throat> so I've got like, this little paper distressy tool thing. Um, and it's got like little notches in it. And there's a little, a little blade in each notch and it just helps you distress um, the end of a paper. If you don't have this um, and you're looking to buy one, I do have them in the shop. But if you don't obviously want to buy one, you could use your scissors if you're going to be careful, obviously. You could run those down it. Um, obviously it's just a tad more dangerous. <laughs> um, but if you trust yourself enough to do that, um, have at it. Uh, so I'm just literally just... I'm holding it at a slight angle and then I'm just sliding it down the page and it's just creating that rough edge that would have been there after a certain amount of time if it was obviously an authentic piece of an authentic en old envelope so I'm just going to try and get that edge <laughs> Obviously this bit here is a little bit tricky because there's little notches. So I'm just trying to get into those without completely tearing the paper. And obviously it's not a very thick paper, it's just printing paper, so about, I think it's 80 GSM. So it's not overly sturdy. So now I'm just going to fold it in half and I'm going to go over the bottom part of it as well. Obviously I'm not going to go as deep because I don't want to break it open. So 
again I'm just going to go over with my stress ink and again I'm literally just rubbing it and dabbing it and not going crazy with it <clears throat> so as you can I don't know if you can tell but this has got some wrinkles in it from when it's been scanned so the original piece of paper has obviously been wrinkled from time to time so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to push along the edges so I'm just going to nip it and it just kind of push it against itself and then pull it back out it's probably easier for you to see what I'm doing rather than me try to explain it I'm basically trying to nip the edges and it's creating a sort of crimped look and like I said I'm straightening them back out afterwards I don't want to keep it like that because we say we're going to be gluing this together I just want that look. As you can see, it's torn slightly at the bottom there. That's okay. I don't mind that at all. And while I've been distressing this, it's crimped it slightly. Um, and I'm just going to add that extra, that extra little piece there. So obviously you can see around the edges now where it's all crinkled. So I'm going to fold it back in together and then I'm just going to take it and I'm not going to like scrunch it up but I'm going to very lightly just kind of push it. And then again straighten it back out. And then I'm going to look and see if there's any pieces on here that look like they've had more wear and tear than other places. So I can't really see any, but I'm going to create some. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to very lightly Creep. just to create a few little scratches and I will ink over the top of those as well you see I'm even very light these are very sharp scissors um, so I don't need to put a ton of pressure there because obviously that's where dirt would attract to the the white part of the paper and then I think we're done what I think I'm going to do is I've got some vintage um, tape. And since I tore that bit, I might actually add some. So bear with me a second. Okay, never mind, can't find that anywhere. So yay. So I just grabbed two washi tapes that I just got today and a kit <laughs> um, that I'd ordered. So I'm just gonna grab this one. It's like a little measuring tape. And add that instead because that's all I can find at the moment. And I'm just going to 
scrape across that with my bone folder to make sure it gets well and truly stuck on there. And now we're going to add our little hinges. see there's little bits here that are kind of visible and so I'm just going to go in with my ink and make for instance that I'm just going to tear that away and just make sure that anything that's showing that shouldn't be showing is now all inked up and we now have our envelope and it's really accessible because we've added those little hinges so the whole envelope can be opened up, whereas if we glued it, we would have had that pinch right there and it would have stopped things going beyond this point. So, one thing done. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and just distress the other two um, full letters in exactly the same way. These are slightly thicker as um, I've had to glue them on separate pieces of paper and then stick them together. Um, but it works just the same. the little folds as well again not going crazy just a nice little run and I'm going to do it over both sides and that's obviously going to distress it but it's also going to like make that fold really quite floppy so you, it feels like it's been used a lot Obviously, if this was on one sheet of paper, I wouldn't do it a couple of times. I'd only do it maybe the once, and I'd do it about quite light. Try to find which fold's the right one. Right, so I think it's this one. It's obviously messed up. I folded it twice. I'm going to go over those bits with some ink and again like I say I'm just kind of dabbing it I'm not going to town I'm not making sure that I've got every last piece um, inked and obviously you can see I've ripped it in several places that's okay we can fix that with tape or we can even just leave it as is because obviously after years I would, I would have a ripper too in it especially this one which seems to have um, survived the wars so if you're going to put a lot of ink in anywhere the one place you can do it is like in the corners and the edges because those places are where they would be touched the most so it would pick up dark and things like that right in the corner right there and 
um, but yeah, if you want it to look relatively authentic, don't just take your your sponge and just go because that will it doesn't look natural when you do that. So I think I'm going to take this one and add my tape somewhere over the rainbow. So I don't mind that little one, but there was a big one. I think it's this one here. Because this one's like mega ripped. So I'm literally just going to place it right over. And where's my bone folder? So run away. There we go. And again, I'm just squaring it to make sure that it is not going anywhere. And I could even take another bit and put it down. I think actually I'm going to do. And it looks kind of sloppy, kind of like someone mended it on the fly. <clears throat> Again, I'm just burnishing it. And that's going nowhere. So again, I'm going to have a look and see if there's anywhere I want to distress further. And I don't see anywhere that's naturally distressed, so I'm just going to have to go for it myself. I don't think there is a distress tool out there that does that, but if I am wrong, I would love to know about it. Um, so yeah, you could use um, your tweezers as well. I've done that a couple of times, um, if they're sharp enough. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting a little bit of ink in those areas because obviously the whiter it is, the more dirt it's going to attract. And then again, I'm just going to kind of go around and do that little crimping, nipping thing we'll rub again. And obviously you want to remember to straighten it back out afterwards. Um, this is to make it look like it's been shoved in a drawer and it's hit something and it's been kind of crumpled and then you've came across it and smoothed it back out and then so on and so forth. It's maybe been shoved in a pocket. So again, I'm just going to kind of take it from the corners and very gently just kind of scrunch it. And then from the opposite corner, scrunch it and then straighten it back out. And there we go. So now I am going to fold it into itself and I'm actually going to have to put a little bit of tape there as well because it is ripped where it's supposed to close. So we can't have that. If you're using washi tape like myself, you're going to want to obviously make sure that you burnish it really well because otherwise washi tape is made to be repositionable. Some are stronger than others, um, don't get me wrong, but the whole purpose of a washi tape is it's a painter's tape that is supposed to be able to come off whatever you're using. Um, so you want to give it a good score or even put some glue underneath it. Um, to make sure it's it's not going anywhere. Uh, 
down. There we go. And I think I've got my little pocket thingy here. I'm going to stick this one in here beside our photo frame. Um, now, where is that other one? So I'm going to go off and do this one off camera because you really don't need to see me do that for a third time. And then I will be right back. This is this one all done. I lost a blooming nail doing it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and go away and ink, eh, not ink, distress these the same way. I've already done the, the edges. Um, again, using this little doodad here. Um, so I'm going to call it quits for today and go away and age, age up these receipt pages here and then we can start making some um, embellishments to go inside our journal. But I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will hopefully see you in the next one. I hope you're well, take care and God bless. Bye.